So what we're going to be doing here is an introduction to QGIS. Some of this may have been covered in the uh, briefing on Wednesday, but uh, I just want to make sure that everybody has a resource to kind of get started with this and go through this. Uh, this first tutorial is just um, adding GIS data into a map, and then we're going to use um, a polygon that we create in a new shapefile to filter that data out or clip that data um, so that we can kind of zoom in on our maps. And I'm pretty sure that wasn't covered um, in that lecture, so um, that might be something new. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to use the same GIS data that I shared um, on the Google Drive. I know uh, one student had a problem uh, getting that data in. I haven't had any issues, so I hope you don't have any issues. If you do, she was able to just re-download the uh, GIS data and it worked, so that might be an avenue for you. Like I said, I haven't had any problems, so I can't really troubleshoot it, and I couldn't find anything online that explained why she was having problems. So, um, hopefully, like I said, hopefully you don't have any issues with it. Uh, and if you do, send me a, an email or something with uh, kind of an, the error that you get, and I'll see if I can figure it out. But I couldn't with her, so uh, no promises. Anyway, uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to add a new shape file. I'm going to leave all of this information on the source type, and I'm just going to come down here to browse. Uh, I'm, the shape file I'm going to put in is going to be the neighborhood shape file. I like to use this one because it gives me kind of a broad sense of the area and lets me and it's going to help me to zoom in on the area that I'm interested in uh, viewing or in creating. Um, there might be another one that you like better. That's fine. It's just how I'm doing it. Now this is probably isn't quite enough data. I, I have a general idea of where my area is, and I could probably make this work, but it's pretty easy to load this data in. As long as I pick a file that's not too big, I can probably get a little bit more information before I uh, trim it or clip it out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to load the waterways because there's a river right there uh, running through our site, so that gives me um, that gives me a real good indicator of where I want to be, which is pretty much right in this area. Now, one thing you can do is change the the way these things display. Um, you know, if you want a different color scheme, that's fine, or maybe you just want something to pop out a little bit more or be easier to see. Um, it's pretty easy to do, so. If you want to do it, then go ahead and do that. Now what I need to do is create the polygon that I'm going to use to trim this, this, all, this all of this data that I don't want out. Um, I'm going to need to create a new shapefile to do that. And the command for it is down here uh, in the lower left-hand corner. Uh, if you hover over it, it says new shapefile layer. That's what I want, so I'm going to create that. And it's very important that you select polygon for what we're doing here. Um, there's different times when you know selecting line or point may be useful, but for what we want to do, polygons what uh, what you want to select. And if you don't, I don't know that you can uh, make what we're trying to do here work. So um, if you forget or do this wrong, then you're probably just going to have to start over. Um, the next really important thing is this specify CRS. So the, the automatic CRS that it has in it, we don't want. We want to use the same CRS file that um, these two uh, GIS layers or shape files are already using, and that's this one. Um, this is something that I figured out. This was the first kind of problem I ran into. I couldn't, I was trying to make this work, and I couldn't, uh, and it was because I didn't have this proper, uh, CRS stands for Coordinate Reference System. Uh, but I didn't have the the same one selected, so that it could, it, it didn't work. So you want to make sure you select the, this generated CRS and hit OK. And then I'm not going to change any other data. I'm just going to click OK. And then now is now I have to figure out where I want to save it. Uh, I'm not going to make a folder for it. I'm just going to kind of save it out um, in um, in this GIS data folder. But I'm not going to create a special folder like I have with all the other areas. Uh, and I'm just going to name this uh, clipping layer. So now that's created, but I don't really have any info on it. 
Um, in order to do that, I need to I need to add some info. And to to do that, I'm going to select the layer, and I'm going to go over here to this toggle editing. It's this little pencil in the upper left hand corner. Alternatively, you can right click on it, and then there's the toggle editing on there as well. So either one will work. So you click on it, and then now I can add data to that layer. Um, in order to do that, I want to go to this. It's two. It's two buttons over. It's the add feature button. I'm going to click on that. And then I'm just going to drag, or I'm just going to click points uh, to create my polygon. Um, I'm going to make a, a more of an irregular shape polygon than I did for the Map 3D tutorial, uh, just because of, now that I've done this a couple times, I, I have a better idea of the shape that I that I want to filter out. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and and do with this. Um, and you can get per, as precise or as imprecise with this as you want. Uh, once you've drawn all your points for your polygon, you're going to kind of go over to your to where you started and right click, and then that's going to create the the polygon. And um, this attributes for the clipping layer pops up, and it wants you to assign that polygon an ID. I don't know if the ID it actually matters what you assign it, and I do, do know it needs to be a number, so I'm just going to assign it one, and I'm going to hit enter. And the last thing I need to do is. Um, toggle editing off so that's going to be the final step and now it's going to ask me if I want to save the changes that I just made to the clipping layer which we do so I'm going to save that so now I've created a new shape file um, that's this kind of hatched polygon surrounding the area that I want I can do that I have the same editing features that I had with the other things if I wanted to change the color or change the line types I can do that with it um, but really all I want it to do is, is filter out some of this data for me. So in order to do that, we're going to go to the, this vector menu. And we're going to come down here to ge ge excuse me, Geo Processing Tools and select Clip. Um, and so what this clip is going to do is uh, it's going to clip one of the shapefile, one of the existing shapefiles to that boundary. It's going to clip everything outside of that boundary. Unfortunately, you can't do this with more than one shapefile. Um, in the Map 3D tutorial, you saw that we just kind of selected all the shapefiles and then we could drag a polygon around it and, and uh, filter out all that data. As far as I know, we can't do that with this program. Um, so you're going to have to do this layer by layer. But it actually it goes fairly quick. Um, so let's just go ahead and do that. So your input vector layer is going to be the layer that you want to clip. In this case, I want to clip the neighborhoods layer. And then your clip layer is going to be always this clipping layer that we created. The, we're going to have to uh, give it a name. So I'm just going to call this clipped neighborhoods. Uh, I kind of want to keep the same naming conventions that already exist. If you have a better name, then it's fine. Um, this is going to work out just well for it, just fine for us. So, name that clip labor, that clipped neighborhoods, and then I'm going to select OK, and it's going to ask me if I want to put this shape file into uh, this. It says the TOC, which I believe is this uh, little area over here, which I do. So I want to add it to the map. Now, um, if you look at it it's created this this purple area it's, um, and what that actually is is it's it's a new it's a new shape file that had all of that neighborhood data on it minus everything outside of that clipped out, outside of that clipping polygon now like I said before these things go pretty quick and that's because this dialog box stays open um, so I can come down here and any layers that I have added to this um, are going to are going to be available to me so I can just do this and if I had seven different layers then I could just do this seven times and that's why I said it goes pretty quickly um, just a word of oh, you got to name it sorry about that so I'm gonna name that clipped hydro so just a, uh, a word of caution uh, the larger your file the longer this process is going to take and it's just like the map 3d it might it might crash your computer so um, what I suggest is, is doing this for all the small layers that you have, the, 
you know, your bike paths and whatever, but things like the building layers and maybe even the curbs and the sidewalks, maybe save those for last and make sure you save before you do this because if it freezes up and you haven't saved, then you might lose a lot of work. Um, so I it went ahead and clipped that. I can see I've got a new, uh, I've got a new, um, hatched polygon shape file uh, where right over the existing river um, it, it kept that dialog box open but I've clipped everything that I can clip now I can turn these layers off that I don't want this this one that I brought in originally I could turn it off and see that it worked um, but really I don't I don't need those layers I don't need them adding file space to or adding file size to uh, what's what I'm whatever I'm left over with here. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove them. And in order to do that, I select the layer and I right click on it and I go to remove. And I'm going to do that for both of them because I I don't need them. You can it doesn't delete the shape file. Uh, it's still in it's still in that database folder. You didn't you didn't get rid of it. All you did is take it off the map. So you can always put it back on. And I just don't want to. I don't want to clutter up my drawing or make my file size larger than it needs to be. So that's why I took them off. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause this video and I'm going to add some more layers. Um, that'll probably take a little bit more time. And then I'm going to try to keep track of that time so I can give you an idea of how long that process is going to take. And then I'll restart the video and show you the final process. Okay, we're back. Um, so that took me about 50 minutes. Now, some of that time was me cleaning up the colors and arranging the layers. Um, and uh, on the like the buildings layer, where it took a really long time, I got up and you know went and got a snack and stuff like that. So it, it, you might be able to do it a little bit quicker than that. Um, if you have more data, it's going to take longer. If you have less, it's going to take less time. Um, but all in all, I think. Um, it works pretty well. I'm satisfied with what I have. Um, now the next question is going to be uh, how are we going to, to get this data into a format that we can use in Illustrator. Um, I'm going to work on that um, along with the uh, importing like the CSV files. Um, so that's going to probably be the next tutorial which I also hope to have to finish tonight. Um, so if, uh, if you have any questions about what I did here or if I, you need to do something specific that I don't address in any of these tutorials that I'm about to send out, then um, send me an email, let me know, maybe, um, maybe I can figure it out. Um, also, if you have anything you want to do um, for tomorrow's lecture, um, then we're, or not tomorrow's lecture, tomorrow where we kind of sit down and, and work on this during studio, then um, send me an email so I can research it. There's no guarantee that I'm just going to know exactly what it is that needs to be done. Um, so the more uh, lead up time that I can try to figure it out, uh, the easier it'll be for me and the more successful I think we'll be in figuring out overall. So um, hopefully this helped you. Um, it's not much different than the map 3D at this point. So um, if you were still using that, then I, I don't see much difference now, but we'll see about getting the CSV files in there. And I'm also going to see if I can do that with Map3D, because I know some people have started in Map3D and probably just assume stay in it. So maybe we'll be able to do the exact same things in Map3D. Uh, we'll have to see. Um, like I said, if you, have any pro if you have any problems or questions, send me an email, and um, I hope this is helpful.